Welcome to Pure Love Season 2, Episode 2, and today's topic is nudity. Um, I'll start by reminiscing about my childhood <laughs> involving nudity. Well, growing mm. up, you were basically a nudist. Every time you came home, your clothes were off. Um, yeah. You had little to nothing at all, nothing <laughs> on at all times. But for me personally, it didn't bother me or shock me, I guess, because, you know, since I've always seen it. It wasn't like, oh my God, I'm seeing a naked body. And because it wasn't like, it's not like you're forcing your body mm-hmm. on me. You weren't like making me look at your body. You know, it was just like, I'm just in my natural form. This is when I feel the most comfortable. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't like intimidating or frightening or and I don't have any negative like feelings or thoughts connected to you being naked. I feel like it, it definitely like, it made me more... Um, just comfortable with other people's bodies in general because you know like throughout your life you, you don't really pay attention to it, especially when you're younger you're mm. forced to be around a lot of other nudity or your own nudity in front of others especially if you're little and you need to help with the bathroom or right. changing or anything like that so i guess it was like a preparation for the world mm-hmm. and i know i feel like you were doing it to help me be comfortable with my body as well you know, to show you what a real body looks like, mm-hmm. not just on television, these, like, perf- perfect bodies. Right. So, you trying to say I don't got a perfect body? No. You have an amazing <laughs> body. <laughs> but I'm I am, um, I just, I th- I'm, I personally think that it was a, a good thing for me. I think it helped mm-hmm. a lot. Because um, I feel like there's a lot of fear around it. Yeah, yeah. And shame. So I'm like, I'm glad that I didn't have that. Yeah, I mean, I um, growing up, I had um, it's it's interesting because my mom, um, you know, we saw her breasts, and sometimes, you know, if she was coming out of the bathroom, I might uh, see her butt going into her room. I think once my mother tells me a story that once when I was maybe two or something, she was in the bathroom with the door open. I walked in. And she got up to wipe and I saw all the hair and I freaked the hell out. (laughs) And I was, it was screaming, calling it Cuco. That's monster in Spanish. I was like, Cuco, Cuco. I was so scared. And um, I didn't know what that was. I didn't know that you could have hair down there. So my mother never really explained like nudity. It was just like, you know, it happened um, in the house and that was it. But it was only my mother. That was it. So me and my sister girls um i go girls <laughs> yeah at the time we were girls or well, i was a girl and um you know that was like a definite no no we were very very clear that e- like even if we wore skirts or dresses we had to wear shorts under and i thought all girls wore you know shorts under their dresses or skirts because you know it made sense so your panties wouldn't show and all that so my mother was really uh, aware of this idea of strangers or, you know, these other people doing, possibly doing things. So just like um, try to make it harder. I remember one time we talked about it. She's like, this, you know, this can make it harder for them because there's too much to fumble with. Right. Um, interesting conversation to have as a kid. Right. Um, and then, you know, having you. Uh, at that point, when I was being like naked around you, that was when I was at my doing my work, you know, my um, self love and um, trying not to hate myself and being in therapy and all of this stuff. And that really felt good to me. But I remember checking in with you about these things because I didn't want her to feel uncomfortable at all. And I, I was doing it for me, you know. Um, and also, too, I really did want you to feel <laughs> like you could if you wanted to so i would take you to these uh retreats these like women's retreats and stuff (laughs) and like 75 percent of the people there the women were they were naked all over the place and i loved it because it was different all colors all bodies i mean from the tiniest to the biggest and i loved all of that and i wanted her to see that it was okay and i remember asking you i was like mandy 
you know, oh, I said, we were at the pool area, and I said, Mandy, you know, if you want to get naked and get in the pool, you can. And she was like, no, I don't want to. And I was like, okay. And that was the end of the conversation. You were very clear that you did not want to be naked, but you felt okay with me being naked. So I'm glad that we were able to talk like that, because I think if you would have told me it makes me uncomfortable, I, I would have uh, reconsidered it, because I didn't want you to be uncomfortable. But... Uh, this is something obvious here. This is a different conversation here. If I were a cis male, I think this conversation would look different. Yeah. Right? So, uh, unfortunately, I would say, unfortunately, because the, the naked body is a beautiful thing. And there is an epidemic of child sexual abuse in this world. You know? Um, and, unfortunately, bad things happen. And so, people are afraid. And we lead with fear. And because men are uh, at the higher end of being harm doers um, on sexual violence and sexual assault. Um, we associate um, all of that with the penis and the penis is a harmful thing, right? And so what if you're a dad and you have a daughter and you happen to be a nudist and you're walking around the house like nothing, no erection, no anything, just walking around the house, then would that change? I, I suspect it would. Yeah, I'm, I have to say too. Like I know, I'm. I've never been around or been exposed to like a fully nude male until I don't know, maybe middle school or older. You know, and that's probably by accident or I saw it in a movie or something. But like physically to see a man, like a grown man naked, I'm like, you. I didn't even like realize how like rare that was. Mm -hmm. Um. And I don't, like, I mean, I understand, like, the basis of it, but at the same time, I'm just, like, you, that fear is just, like, you're assuming that everyone is going to be a vic uh, victimizer, and I hate that people project that even, like, to that, that bond that could be built with your child, because I'm just, like, you know, you don't want to go in thinking, like, oh, he's going to, like, harm the child, or he might possibly harm the child, and... Mm -hmm being naked is like the gateway or a doorway to that mm -hmm. is harmful thinking for everyone involved because nudity is not always sexual right it's right. just we make it that we, yeah we, we make, it make we make it so sexual and i'm like being naked is not a sexual thing at all mm -hmm. like right because when kids are little a lot of times they, the time. they run around naked or they're in their diapers and stuff like that and then they hit a certain age where you decide okay this is inappropriate now so, like, I, I wonder how, how do we convey that to kids, too? Like, because I'm thinking about nudity of the child. Like, right, what about diaper changing? I know um, diaper changing is a, a, a big topic here because I remember when you were younger and I was still with your dad, um, you, um, like, my mom and uh, other women in my family were just, like, clear. Like, you do not let a man change a little girl's diaper like it just doesn't happen and then in my family that was or in my immediate family that was the case like you you do not let a man and I um and for a long time I didn't question that I was like absolutely but it's interesting because my abuser was a female <laughs> right and not a stranger you know so it, it was interesting to try to grapple with these things these ideas of the possibility of this um uh, this abuse or this harm doing or something because j just because of the penis. But I understand we live in a world that's sexist <laughs> and, uh, you know, patriarchy is alive and well. And like I said before, um, harm doers, um, as we know now, um, tend to be predominantly cis male. So how, where's the balance in if you want to raise a child that's like, you know, um, feels comfortable around nudity um maybe you're a nudist you know you live in a nudist colony or or you just don't want them to be afraid of it so wh where do you find that balance you know because i feel like uh, um the only times that i've heard of like anything semi-positive with a male being nude around their child is when they're teaching their sons how to pee standing up because mm -hmm. they wanted to show by example. Right. So I think that's like maybe the only time a kid might be like, oh, I saw my dad's penis. Right, right. But, you know, it's not any other context. And I'm just like, why, like, why put such a stigma on it? You're already, you're adding to this fear when mm -hmm. a child has, comes into this world with no fear. No child is born like, 
men are predators, penises are bad, this is this, this is that, until you put that in their head. So I'm like, you, you... Well, not just putting it in their head, though. I mean, I understand what you're saying. It, it's it's putting it in their head, but then it's also based in something, right? So that's why yeah, I like, say, like, not, what is the... Yeah, it's not pure fantasy, but I mean, at the same time, it's like, I don't want my child to automatically assume that because they're around nudity right. that has to do with men, that it's because it's going to be because of this reason. Right. When right, you can right, just right. be nude. Because I'm like, I know I... I don't remember seeing my dad without any type, like maybe without a top in the summer, but mm-hmm. even with Boppy, barely saw him without a shirt. Right, right. So I'm like, he was just always fully mm-hmm. dressed and prepared to be in front of people. And I know like with um, with seeing you nude, you know, because being a, being a girl, you're around more nude women. Right, right. So it wasn't such a shock for me, like going, like I know some kids I went to school with, they might be like, oh my God, she's naked. Mm-hmm. But for me, I was like, yeah yeah she's just getting changed you know like it wasn't that big of a deal for me and but i mean i will say uh a a big not a big deal but something i was like oh was just seeing some certain other people's like when i started seeing someone else that was naked besides you Mm -hmm. that's when i was like oh (laughs) i'm seeing somebody else's body (laughs) but i remember like one of uh your old roommates i remember like she had on like a, a long shirt with nothing under and she mm. was sitting a certain way and that was like the first time I saw like a full vagina and I was just like <laughs> oh cause I'm like I've only seen like you know you standing up like right, okay right. like this is your vulva that's just the outside <laughs> but to see it like I was a gynecologist I was like wow <laughs> and then I remember one time I don't even think I told mommy about this one time she was coming out of the bathroom she just took a shower and she dropped something uh-huh. so she bent over to pick something up and I was behind her and I just happened to walk so I was like <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> so like, seeing a vagina from the, the back angle is very like you see everything and I'm like to see my grandmother's vagina it was that was like oh my god <laughs> Oh my god, but oh my goodness. I was still like mildly prepared, but mm-hmm. you know, it who like how often do you see your grandmother's vagina? <laughs> so I'm just like I was just like, Oh my god, okay, I just saw that. That reminds okay. me that I, I, I actually saw my dad make it once by mistake and he was so angry. Oh, he was so angry. It was just like the fire in him because He's I walked embarrassed. in. I walked in on the bathroom. He didn't lock the door, and I saw it, and I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> <laughs> and he was just so embarrassed and so angry, um, and I, I was so confused by it. Right. So again, I keep going to this balance, right? Because like, for me, I think the conversation would be mo- less about, uh, I guess, less about the nudity and more about what privacy is and what feels comfortable and trusting your gut right so if you were to tell me you know like or or me asking because i did ask you you know like oh that makes me feel funny or can you you know i would have changed that behavior because we live in a house together right um and i would have taken that into consideration and used that as a teachable moment for you negotiating with me or you you know like you saying i don't like that i don't want to see it and i'm like i respect what you're telling me and you don't have to see that Right. Um, and that, that's that's the those, these are the conversations I talk about in terms of like from birth to crossing over how we talk to our kids about sexuality, which includes, of course, nudity um, and um, negotiation and boundary setting. Right. So like what are the boundaries like when we see our little children masturbating because they do and it's totally natural. What do you do? Scream at them and hit them and tell them that that's bad. Or do you say it's a private matter and teach them about that they can you know go to their room and do that in private and and also kind of discussing what the difference between privacy and secrecy is right so those are two different things so to me i think that's it's a another opportunity for a deeper deeper discussion to get back in but i i guess we really have to like be real here and um, that i would suspect that people would have a much more of a problem a man a cis man being naked in front of a girl right probably less in front of a boy maybe sameness is um more acceptable right a girl and her mother or uh, and a boy and his His father. father is more acceptable than the other way around right 
But then this conversation gets even more interesting when you think about trans parents, right? Who have different bodies. Right? So what does that mean? Uh, Is it, you know, I think it's absolutely beautiful and normal uh, for your child to see that nudity because you get to show how different everyone is, right? Like that, that you're a part of naked bodies, <laughs> right? That that you are part of the spectrum of what naked bodies look like. And that is also, you know, a teachable moment um, in a lot of ways. So, yeah. I'm interested to to hear what people think about this. Yeah, in what terms are your of views on nudity? Cis men and... Um, being naked or cis dads being naked in front of their daughters and um what does that mean is it beautiful and natural um because it's the human form uh is it something to be afraid of i i think it's uh, something to uh, build on um yeah i think it's something to build on and i think it's a great opportunity not to lead with fear but to just have a deeper discussion about it but i also know that uh, a lot of us, that's what we got in that moment. Because I was there at one point. I was there with the fear. Lots of I, fear. <laughs> I feel like um, with my baby, I would, you know, I mean, they're going to be seeing a lot of me naked anyway with bath time, with breastfeeding, with mm-hmm. all types of stuff. So, you know, it's going to be different for me, but it would be, the challenge would be talking to the father to see how he would feel. Right. Because, right. de- you know, depending on what the baby is born to be, you know, how he would feel around about being nude in front of our child. Right. right. Cause I wonder how he would feel about that. Um, you know, cause everyone has different upbringings and different views on things, but I know personally, I wouldn't mind, especially because I know him and I know that he is not an abuser and he wouldn't be like flashing his penis around inappropriately around a child, you know, I know I, f- I know that if he were nude, it would be because that's just the state that he's in. Would you, even though you know this, right, because I think a lot of people know, you know, that oh, this person wouldn't hurt, like, I knew that my, you know, family member wouldn't hurt me, and then it happened, right? So would you consider creating or talking about it, like, not just letting it happen, but, like, talking about it and creating whatever boundaries or concerns that may come up for you prior to nudity happening? Yeah, I would, uh, I would definitely have certain boundaries, I guess, so the the lines don't get blurred right. um, mm-hmm. about what's appropriate and what's not. Mm-hmm. You know, like, there are definitely going to be some lines, you know, but, because, you know, there's sometimes where I'm just like, all right, why would you do that? You know, like, I wouldn't recommend you, like, sitting my child on your bare naked right, lap, right, you know? exactly. So that's a great boundary yeah. right there. <laughs> like, right? why would you sit with right. my baby on your lap like that? Right. But, you know, if you're just getting out the shower, you're getting changed, and you're walking around, the baby's in the room, like, mm-hmm. it's whatever. But yeah, so. certain things I would definitely want to be like, that's just not necessary. The nudity oh. isn't necessary in that context, mm-hmm. but... And other stuff, I, w- I don't want the baby to be ashamed of their body or be right. afraid of others' bodies as well. Right. And in, in talking about bodies, you know, I brought up trans bodies and stuff, but I also think that when we're teaching our children about body parts and what boys have and what girls have, because that's where we go, right? I mean, go, even hitting back on the last episode of the gender reveal, it's like, how do we raise our kids? Like, do we start them off, like, without even knowing? You know, I do this workshop for queer parents right either you're a queer parent or you're a parent who has a queer or a trans child how do we talk in those families around sex and bodies right like do we give them what everybody else gets and then later on when we think that they're old enough and it's age appropriate you know i believe that it's it's age appropriate when it's when you're teaching them about bodies that um, letting them know that some little girls have vaginas and some little girls have penises or some, some little people. girls have or you know some little girls or people thank you have Audis and some little girl uh, boys or people have um, innies no I said it backwards you know what I mean innies and Audis <laughs> rather than saying penis and vaginas right um it's a great opportunity to bring that up. Because, um, I mean, they start discovering their own genitals at a couple of months, a year old, like, when they're just, like, hands mm-hmm. on the pants all the time. So I'm like, every, you know, why not? They're already trying to figure it out. They're listening. Mm-hmm. Why not explain it to them? Mm-hmm. So how would you talk to your 
child, grandchild, niece, um, or the, you know, a young child. person in yeah. your life. How would you talk to them about bodies and nudity and what kind of boundaries would you create for yourself? We're curious. Um, Let us know. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching this episode. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Hey, everyone, don't forget to go to IGRivera.com and fill out the survey, the caregiver survey. We want to hear from you about your experiences talking to young people or your children or the children that you advocate for around sex and sexuality. IGRivera.com, caregiver survey. Pass it on.